Good morning. This is the operational update for the Anderson Complex, August 3rd. Uh, my name is Jason Porter. I am the operations section chief for Great Basin Team 3. Uh, let's talk about the fire out there. Uh, we've had a good couple of days. Uh, the conditions have uh, allowed us to get into some areas and protect some values out there around the fire area. Uh, the crews have been taking advantage of the, the window to get some good work done on the ground. Uh, specific to the uh, Tech Lanika fire, you'll notice a lot of structures on this river corridor on the Tech Lanika River itself. Uh, we've got crews on the ground in there engaged in protecting these structures. Uh, that work consists of removing vegetation and the fuels around those structures and plumbing those areas with hose and pumps. Uh, we did have a little bit of the fire slop across that river onto the north side and the crews have been able to go direct on the fire's edge to extinguish those hot spots and hold the fire there. So they've done an outstanding job in keeping that fire from spreading further north, um, holding the majority of that fire along the river's edge. Um, one of our challenges in this area is now a, a new start that we had occur to the uh, northeast of the Teklanika fire. You'll see it on the map referred to as Pilot Spot. Um, this fire became established in a, a stand of black spruce, uh, very thick, continuous fuels out there, and uh, rapidly grew to a size of just over 90 acres. Um, this area is very remote and presents a challenge to get resources in on the ground, so currently we're expanding the operations of structure protection along the river corridor, um, focusing on making these areas defendable should the fire uh, continue to progress to the north. Thus far, that fire has moved more southeast and is pushing towards the Nanana River corridor uh, where the fuels will transition to uh, a little lighter mix and we're, we're looking at the Nanana River corridor as our, our holding point in keeping both of these fires to the west of that river and thus out of the structures, the highway and the community of Anderson proper. Um, moving down to Anderson, we have had a division working in the community to uh, establish uh, dozer lines, improve fuel brakes, and again doing the same structure protection that we talked about on the Teklanika fire, um, brushing out around homes, uh, installing pumps and hose lays to make this defendable should the fire uh, try to move to the east on us. Flying the fire yesterday, this entire uh, eastern perimeter of the fire looked really good. Uh, it's holding on kind of a braided river system through here. There's a lot of heat and a lot of potential there still, but um, very fortunate that so far it's holding along that uh, kind of wet waterway. Most of the fire's growth yesterday occurred on these uh, sections here to the south, southwest, which is uh, not a bad thing for us as it continues to move towards the fire scar from uh, 2020, uh, 2022, uh, where if it bumps that, um, it will likely hold itself up there as those fuels have not grown back in from that fire last year. Uh, let's take a look at branch two. So again, branch two, uh, continuing uh, to the south from the community of Anderson, the uh, clear Space Force base, they're doing the same kind of work in here of uh, establishing dozer lines, improving fuel brakes, and they'll actually be able to connect those fuel brakes to the town of Anderson, giving us a good uh, eastern uh, defense line there should the fire try to come to the east. Uh, moving further south along the Park Highway, uh, we have a group assessing structures and beginning to do the same operations here of plumbing those structures and uh, doing fuels treatment around those to make them defendable. Uh, moving across the river to the west, we refer to this area as the North 40. We have a division in here, uh, enhancing dozer lines and fuel brakes should the Teklanika fire continue to push to the south as it's been kind of showing us it wants to do there. Uh, our final group we have is the Birch Group. Uh, you'll notice we have another fire in the complex here called the Birch Creek Fire. This fire was very active yesterday uh, uh, around the entire perimeter with runs occurring primarily to the south and southeast uh, with that uh, northwest wind on it. Uh, we saw uh, some pretty extreme fire behavior out here on this fire. Um, very continuous fuels to the south and to the east and we, we anticipate this fire to keep growing as uh, 
conditions out there heat up and continue to dry out. Um, another area as well of uh, poor access and uh, we're unfortunately not able to get firefighters on the ground on that fire. So again, focusing our efforts on structure protection to the north, uh, this rose hip uh, subdivision of cabins. Uh, doing the same work there, making those cabins defendable and plumbing uh, hose lays and water features in there to uh, take care of the defense there should that fire try to move north. We were able to do some work with aircraft on the north end of this fire, putting a little bit of retardant in there, and that is holding, uh, keeping the fire from moving north towards the cabins. Um, I think it's a pretty good synopsis of what has been happening and, and just want to stress over the next uh, 48 hours, we expect to see similar wind patterns uh, from the north, lighter winds. Uh, these fires will continue to grow, but uh, not at uh, severe rates where we have a good window of work to do more good work on the ground of getting these uh, structures ready for defense uh, should these fires uh, try to move to the west on us. Uh, with that, uh, we... Uh, we again look forward to getting out there and taking advantage of those conditions and uh, appreciate you tuning in to check out uh, our progress out here. And that concludes our operational briefing for this shift. Thank you very much.